touchdown at London's Gatwick Airport came after seven hours and 40 minutes. Despite a tardy takeoff from Charlotte, Flight 160 was just six minutes late landing in England. Piedmont was not about to let this moment pass without the proper ceremony, only slightly Americanized. Inside this plane named the Pride of Piedmont, the nearly full house was applauding. Outside, Piedmont Chairman Bill Howard personally greeted each passenger at this special ceremony. Among them was former Charlotte Mayor John Belk, now chairman of the Airport Advisory Committee. Piedmont's and Charlotte's first international service were a hit with him. You're pretty happy, aren't you? Oh, yeah, we're terrific now. Now we go for the next one, go to Germany next. But most of all, this moment, this historic passage, meant the most to Piedmont's employees. What do you think when that plane took off? Very excited. Very what do you excited. think when it landed? More excited. <laughs> uh, 27 years ago, when I started flying DC-3s, I would have never dreamed of flying and working a trip from Charlotte to London in an aircraft that was big enough to put our DC-3 inside of. Now, London, with all its fanfare and history, is just a single flight away from the Queen City. ingenuity it takes to build a model airline. To go from a small local airline with just a few destinations in the Mid-Atlantic and Ohio Valley to a major airline stretching from Los Angeles to London, England. The story of Piedmont Airlines growth since its beginning in 1948 is quite remarkable. Our first fleet was three DC-3s, two of which we owned and the third one we leased. Uh, I well remember getting those first two DC-3s. Bud Gilly, one of our uh, original pilots, and I went to New York and looked the airplanes over and decided they were a uh, good opportunity, well-maintained, good shape, ready to go on the line. So he flew one back and I flew the other one back. <laughs> In formation. <laughs> It was February 20, 1948, when the enthusiastic Tom Davis and a handful of family members, Piedmont personnel and state dignitaries, made history with a direct flight from North Carolina to the Ohio Valley. Both Mr. Davis and Bill McGee, who was one of the few fortunate Piedmont employees on the inaugural flight, confessed that neither could have envisioned Piedmont Airlines as it is today, but instead had to concentrate on attainable goals at that time. Thus began the slow process of building Piedmont Airlines. By the end of 1948, six luxurious three-mile-a-minute, 24-passenger DC-3s were in service, flying in six states and 28 communities, a territory that never had scheduled airline service. As Piedmont grew in the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic region, so did our fleet, as the F-27 was added in 1958. And in 1961, the Martin 404 joined the fleet, placing Piedmont atop the local service carriers with the largest fleet of modern pressurized aircraft. In 1962, the CAB authorized a 50% increase in Piedmont's route mileage. This was, to date, the largest single-day expansion program ever accomplished by a local service airline. While propeller airplanes had served us well, we soon began looking at more modern aircraft. At that time, Bill McGee was assistant vice president of sales. In my own mind, one of the uh, most significant days in the history of this company was when we made the transition uh, into uh, the jet era. And we operated uh, the first uh, seven 
27 aircraft, uh, which uh, was an aircraft uh, that we had leased while we were waiting on uh, the delivery of the 737. Uh, we felt uh, from a marketing standpoint and an operational standpoint that it was time uh, created by competitive activity that we'd get involved in the jet business. So I think, uh, aside from the original startup date, that that probably was one of the most significant moves that the company's made. One that certainly was uh, a dynamic move and a move that uh, has uh, set the pace for the rest of the progress of this company. As the new Boeing jets joined our fleet, we added larger prop jets with the addition of the FH-227 as well as the YS-11. In 1967, the airline moved into a new general office and maintenance hangar. And on a rainy day in October, the new facilities were dedicated. An expanding route system, new planes, and a beautiful new headquarters facility. Things that were happening then to make us even more proud of our airline. Many more changes occurred in our operation in the 70s, when in 1971, a new central reservations office opened in Winston-Salem, dramatically improving passenger service and internal efficiency. The old handwritten file card system was replaced with computer terminals, providing immediate flight information. In 1975, our fleet took on a new look. The YS-11s and 737s got a new paint job a new insignia, and the word airline was dropped. A bold new look. In 1978, as the war over airline deregulation was being fought on Capitol Hill, Mr. William Howard joined Piedmont's management team, bringing some new ideas on deregulation. Mr. Howard said we should support deregulation based on the growth opportunities and the fact that as an efficient carrier, we could successfully compete with other airlines. Piedmont soon changed sides, supporting deregulation, and in October 1978, a new era in air transport regulation began with the passing of the Airline Deregulation Act. Piedmont quickly took advantage of airline deregulation in creating a new growth pattern called the Bypass Strategy, whereby our new flights were an improvement over existing service. When we inaugurated service to Denver and Miami, for example, we bypassed the large traditional connecting points and flew nonstop from important cities in the east. While our bypass strategy was proving to be a successful formula in our route expansion, a new method of expansion began to unfold as we methodically began to increase the number of departures at Charlotte. In 1980, we began scheduling flights to allow online connections avoiding traditional interline connections. The benefits of feeding our own routes were quickly realized as passenger loads and profits increased steadily with the addition of flights. The next few years saw some major changes and growth within our company. Mr. Davis was elected chairman of the board and chief executive officer, and Bill Howard became president and chief operating officer. The 727-200 joined Piedmont's fleet, allowing us to equip the more heavily traveled routes with a larger but much less expensive aircraft. A number of new, exciting destinations were added, and along with each flight, the subsequent support was required. New reservation centers opened in Orlando, Nashville, and in Reston, Virginia, a suburb of Washington, D.C. Thousands of employees were hired, among them, flight crew personnel that began training at the new Thomas H. Davis Training Center in Winston-Salem. Housing the latest and advanced training aids, this facility is used for training pilots, flight attendants, and other personnel. The long-awaited Charlotte Terminal opened with Piedmont's 12 dedicated loading bridges, 60 feet of ticket counter space, and other amenities making this a first-class facility for our hub operation. And in order to maintain Piedmont's growing fleet, we opened an $11.5 million maintenance hangar at the Triad Regional Airport. In the summer of 1982, we undertook what was to date the most aggressive single-day startup of service in the company's history. Piedmont opened the Dayton Hub, providing a genuinely needed service 
to several upper Midwest cities which had suffered air traffic losses in the post-deregulation environment. Public response to the Dayton hub was much greater than initially projected, resulting in a profit-making operation long before it was expected. Around that same time, we began pampering members of Piedmont's presidential suite, an array of services, from booking reservations to pouring complimentary soft drinks are provided in these exclusive suites, which are now located in many of Piedmont's major terminals. Soon after Tom Davis retired and Bill Howard was elected president and chief executive officer, Piedmont on July 15, 1983, opened a third hub at Baltimore, Maryland. Off to an even stronger start than either Dayton or Charlotte, Flights at the Baltimore hub had over half their seats filled in just the fourth week of operation. An innovative addition to the BWI hub was made that summer when Piedmont reached an agreement to acquire Henson Airlines, a regional airline based in Salisbury, Maryland. The first time in aviation history, a certified airline has owned its own regional subsidiary. 1984. What profound accomplishments throughout the year. Several new cities joined the Piedmont system, including our first ever West Coast service to Los Angeles and San Francisco. A wave of challenges ranging from the acquisition and modification of long-range aircraft to designing new in-flight services with first-class cabins accompanied the startup of the transcontinental flights. We began operating the Fokker F-28 providing passengers with jet comfort on routes that had previously generated only marginal boardings on the larger Boeing aircraft. We began a new frequent flyer program as well as a new advanced seat assignment program, further entrenching our position as a full service airline. And with revenues exceeding a billion dollars, Piedmont joined the ranks of the major airlines. In recognition of our achievements in 1984, Piedmont was named Air Transport World's Airline of the Year. One of the prices of success is attracting the attention of your competitors. In recent years, we've seen our competitors invade the heart of the Piedmont route system. It was quite evident that major expansion of our airline support areas was necessary in order to continue providing our high standards of customer service. The Winston-Salem Reservation Center underwent a multi-million dollar facelift, and a new reservation center was opened in Dayton, Ohio. We opened a six million dollar addition to the Greensboro Maintenance Hangar, and a new multi-million dollar reservations computer center came online, allowing us to more efficiently handle our passenger services. The Boeing 737-300 joined Piedmont's fleet of aircraft. The Dash 300 aircraft has new fuel-efficient engines and is by far the most flexible passenger aircraft on the market, with the ability to perform short-haul and long-haul flights equally well. Several new cities joined the Piedmont system in 1985. However, the most concentrated expansion occurred in Florida. Piedmont placed into action Project Omaha the code name for the new service with 56 new daily flights within the state of Florida, utilizing our F-28 aircraft. Within a year of the startup of the Piedmont shuttle in Florida, we added over 1,000 employees within the state, placed a new crew base and maintenance base in Miami, as well as a new F-28 training center in Tampa, in Orlando, we opened a new $4 million reservation center to handle the increased Florida traffic. In 1982, Piedmont retired the YS-11 project. Today, however, a number of propeller aircraft are flying the Piedmont colors. As part of the Piedmont commuter system, CC Air, Jetstream International and Brockway Air have joined the Piedmont commuter system. Combine these with the Piedmont Regional Airline with its new destinations in Florida and the Bahama Islands. We're providing customers living in small cities 
easy access to anywhere Piedmont serves. The development of interline partners and consolidation are becoming more commonplace in the airline industry. Early last year, Piedmont acquired Empire Airlines, allowing us to quickly enhance our expansion in the Northeast. Through the acquisition of Empire, we gained 17 new F-28-4000 aircraft, a new hub in Syracuse, a new maintenance base and reservation center in Utica, as well as over 1,000 employees. We also gained 150 departures per day in the Northeast, giving the Piedmont name a greatly enhanced identity in that region of the United States. We now have a new corporate headquarters located at 1 Piedmont Plaza in Winston-Salem. The seven-story building has nearly 160,000 square feet of space and also has an adjacent parking deck. Another major facility expansion program is underway at Piedmont's largest hub. Once completed, Piedmont's Charlotte hub will have 31 gates. In addition, a new training center opens early next year and a new maintenance hangar designed to support the larger aircraft will open in mid-1989. Beyond our aggressive expansion of support facilities in Charlotte, Piedmont has taken further steps to ensure the profitability of our company. On June 15th of this year, we began system-wide first-class service, telling our passengers the airline rated highest in service without even having first class introduces first class. It began in July of last year with an application to the U.S. Department of Transportation for authority to begin service to London, England. Now, with new facilities in place at London's Gatwick Airport, a reservation center nearby, and back here in the United States, support items and facilities in order, Piedmont's Flight 160 was ready for departure. And we're about to make some history. This is a big day for the city of Charlotte, and certainly the greatest day in Piedmont Airlines history. The inaugural flight from Charlotte's Douglas International Airport, bound for London's Gatwick, will be leaving in just a few minutes. On this day, the hard-fought efforts of a score of Piedmont employees came to fruition, as a renovated DC-3 painted in Piedmont's colors of old, escorted our new Boeing 767 wide body, appropriately named the Pride of Piedmont, toward the runway. We're reminded by the stark contrast between these two aircraft of just how much our airline has changed in the last 39 years. The Boeing 767 a twin aisle wide body seating 210 passengers. We presently have three of these beautiful aircraft and have three more to be delivered by early next year. This aircraft offers us the ability to serve routes of more than 5,000 nautical miles with a full payload. In addition to Piedmont's London flights, the 767 is currently being used on high density routes such as Charlotte to Los Angeles. Another Boeing aircraft will soon join our fleet as the launch customer for the 737-400, a stretched version of the 737-300, Piedmont will take delivery of nine of these aircraft late next year. 55 737-400s on order or option and nine 767s ordered or optioned will give us the most efficient technologically advanced aircraft available. This year, your airline has several new cities in its route system. We now have over 1,300 daily departures, serving 119 cities. Service to Nassau begins November 15, and flights to Phoenix and San Diego begin this December. Nineteen eighty-seven, a year of change for Piedmont. This is the first 
mergers since deregulation of two healthy airlines. There have been a number of airline mergers, as you well know, in recent years. And most, of, if I'm not mistaken, in every case, it has been a strong airline merging with or taking over a weaker airline. Here, we've got two healthy airlines, two profitable airlines, two airlines with strong management, two airlines with great people and two airlines with com competitive, compatible equipment and a, and a good service territory. On August 13th of this year, Bill McGee was elected chairman of the board, president and chief executive officer. I think there are tremendous opportunities in front of us when you think of the uh, end product of what this merged company can look like. Uh, you see a company that's uh, over 40,000 people strong that uh, will generate uh, uh, passage of uh, some 60 to 70 million people in the course of a given year uh, and will be and certainly could be the most uh, profitable combination of airlines in the entire industry. Less than 10 years ago, Piedmont was among the smallest of 17 certified regional and trunk airlines with 5,000 employees flying 35 jet aircraft. Under the combined Piedmont US Air PSA system, we will be the third largest passenger and planing airline in the free world with 400 jet aircraft and 40,000 people. this airline is all about. On the ground and in the air, Piedmont is people. What it all gets down to is the fact that uh, this company has in its success story been blessed by a unique group of people that, that had a willingness from the very start to work together toward uh, a common cause. of this new merged company as the work of the development of Piedmont itself. As we face the challenges before us, we carry with us our heritage, that Piedmont know-how the spirit that came to life on a cold February day in 1948. And through the years, has enabled us to build Piedmont Airlines, a model of how good an airline can be.